Parties have submitted their briefs at the presidential election petition court ahead of the ruling. Amongst the other reliefs, the uh, petitioners are asking the courts to nullify the election or decide that President Tinubu was not validly elected, according to Section 134C of the Constitution. If the tribunal accedes to their request, it may order a rerun or a runoff, depending on the reasoning of the courts. If the court orders a, ra a runoff instead of a rerun, how will the candidate be determined? And what does the Constitution provide regarding a situation where the court dismisses uh, or determines, rather, that there is no duly elected president? And a rise analyst, associate professor of law, Sam Amadi, is here to look at this issue. How will the court really come to a determination that there is no president? Well, first, nobody knows what the court will do because the court will normally look at all that has transpired. But the briefs we've seen in public domain that have been circulated seems to like uh, many of those uh, petitioners are asking for invalidation on the ground of maybe no compliance or on the ground that nobody was validly elected. And the constitution seemed to have provided for that. If you look at uh, section 134, so assuming the court comes to that decision, the tribunal, that uh, the election for whatever reason has to be validated, then the, constitution, the, the tribunal may order another election, or if it's because nobody won, nobody got the required, you know, um, numbers to win based, based on the evidence they have, then they're going to do a runoff. The question there is, how do we select who will, who will do who, the runoff? Run but the Electoral Act, I yeah. thought, is clear for a runoff there. The Electoral Act, the Constitution, 134, 3. Yes. The problem is that people mistake two things. It talks about, first, that the person who has the highest number of votes, so yeah. easy to de determine. So yeah. when the tribunal has looked at all the votes and certified those they think are valid, mm. the person who has the highest number of votes is in. The other person who comes in to run in that runoff will be the person who has a majority of votes in the highest number of states. Now that's where it becomes tricky. The question is, what's the majority, legally speaking, as regards maybe highest number of votes? If you watch the language of the constitution are always specific. So if you use in the section 1342, where it talked about what it takes to win. You must have the highest I, I, hope, I hope we're having uh, that, you know, on the, the screen. Yeah, they should have it on the screen so, that, so uh, people can read it. Yeah. yeah. So, it, it, yeah. It, 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 unlike where it talks about who wins in terms of majority of vote and majority uh, to third of uh, votes cast. Yeah, it says majority. Now, if you look at the law, black law dictionary, under dictionaries, a majority is, you have majority when you score more than half. So, they're going to look at who has more than half of the votes in a state. You have, you have state A, B, C, and D. So the person who has the highest of that majority, more than half. So for example, if I win in state A, and I won with, let's say, 30% of the vote, that's not a majority of the vote cast. So if I win with 52%, for example, that's majority. So the Black Law Dictionary, for example, other uh, Miriam Webster says, a number or quantity greater than half of the total is majority. If you look at current dictionary, it's the same thing. It's a number of votes of voters or jurors or others in, a, in agreement constitute more than half of the total. The most interesting is the one of uh, Black Law Dictionary, which is the lawyer's uh, Bible. It says, where there are only two candidates, he who receives the greater number of the vote cast is said to have a majority. When there are more than two competitors for the same office, the person who received the greatest number of votes is a plurality. But he who has not, who has not a majority, on, but he has no majority unless he receives a greater number of votes than those cast for all the candidates, which means 50 plus one. Now, so the interesting thing is this. You may have highest vote in a state, but you don't have a majority of the vote in that state. So it will be discounted for you. So the question says a majority of the votes 
in the highest number of states. So that's the mathematics that they call to local after they have validated all the votes and so okay, fine. How about the mathematics of the FCT as uh, captured in that's our constitution? That's a different one. That will go to them okay. to determine first whether the person declared has won. If they agree mm. that you have to win, then they will look at it whether you win or not. But if, it, if they say you have to win and you didn't get it, that's when you get to this issue of Real. one, three, four, yeah. three. Mm -hmm. It's only when they say that the winner either because he didn't have the number of votes, uh, states, or he didn't get FCT, if they say it so, or he didn't have constitutional qualification. How safe are they do it? Yeah. Whenever they think that the election is inconclusive because somebody has not got, they validly returned, yeah. they, they go to the second stage, which is to say, either they cancel the elections and say, a re-election, a re-run in terms of another election. But once they go to a runoff, which is a one, three, four, three is talking about, it will not be between the person with the valid highest number of valid votes on one bucket, the second person will follow him, because it has to be two, will be the person who the has the majority, highest number of majorities. So if you score 51 and above in six states, somebody may have won you, somebody may have won or got 25% in more states. But if he doesn't have a majority more than you, you are in his half. Now this is going to be Tricky because people will be looking at, oh, it's a matter of numbers. Majority highest, whoever got the highest number of states. No. The person who has the highest number of votes is in, whether he has majority or not. But the second person who joins him is a person who has majority, which is more than half. So this is constitutional now because the quite, people, quite tricky, yeah. Exactly tricky. So the question then is if that happens, people might be disappointed, depending on the votes that the, the tribunal has validated, that the person who may not have the highest number of 25% in highest number of states, or someone who may not have the highest number of wins, but has the highest number of majority in the, the highest number of states. Yeah, the and, spread. And the key point is 50 plus. So if you get 30, you have majority. The people that have small, small, 30, 31, you know. But if you don't have, for the example, 50 plus. For example, if someone has 30, another person has uh, 25, another person has 29, another person has. So you could actually have the 100%, but nobody has majority. It will be discounted for you in calculating majority in the higher state. So that's really what people are not looking at. Because look at the Twitter conversation. People say, oh, it will be X or Y. They're not saying, who did the constitution prescribe? So the constitution in 1343 three says, the first person who gets to the bucket is the highest number of votes cast. Whatever, whether he has three states or ten states, highest number. Yeah. The second person who will follow him to do the runoff now, will be the person who has majority. A majority, when it, there are more than two people, is that you must score 50 plus 1, or 10 or 20. You must have 70, 60. But if you have 45 of the percent of the vote cast, you are not a majority, and that will be discounted. So we might see a surprise when we are someone who didn't have the highest number of states, or who didn't have the no highest number of two third, may have the highest number of majority wins and become the candidate for the election. And that's really why it's tricky. But all this is presupposing that the tribunal takes the view that the election is invalid, inconclusive, or whatever it is. But if they, if they don't take that view, they were not going to get to that point. And this is why it's interesting. We've not had a situation in our country where the election has been upset on the ground that the person declared was not validly declared. So when the briefs, all the, the three briefs, uh, PDP, APC, uh, sorry, Labour Party, API, APM, all the briefs seem to invite the tribunal to either invalidate, mm -hmm. to say elections terribly flawed, rerun, or disqualify a, or, or somebody, or declare that somebody was not validly elected, in which case it might get into a runoff. Yeah, run I don't know. It's really going to be uh, quite tricky, but uh, just looking at the numbers, mm -hmm. you know, I mentioned the FCT, I said mm -hmm. that's going to be a different... Board. The constitutional issue, very yeah, serious one. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And just give us an overview. Okay, the overview, the argument that has been traded in the tribunal is first, the petitioners, namely the PDP and the Labour, hinges on the fact that whoever win must win FCT, say most win. Now the argument to be two, three levels of argument. One is that literal reading of the constitution. The constitution says and, and in grammar, in literal language, grammar uh, and imports that this is addition. a man, addition to something. So if you say, for example, uh, 
Chris Ogodo won major to the states. Including. Chris Ogodo has been elected. So it's a Chris Ogodo won the election and has been, so that's I did, literal. And Kosha says literal meaning is the first meaning. Now, they also argue that if you look at the status of Lagos and FCT, in the 1979 constitution, the same section had the same provisions but didn't add including FCT. Why? Because Lagos elects a governor. Lagos residents have two elections they do, the presidential election and the governorship election. And because section, I think, uh, 229 or so says that FCT will be, will be governed by a president who will act as the governor. So the argument of this group is that the FCT residents do to elect both the president and the governor. And this, therefore, the president of Nigeria has a couple, is coupled. He has to be a president as well as the chief executive of FCT. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense for FCT to at least get 25% in FCT to exercise that office. The other argument on that side is that doing that means that FCT is given a veto over the states. Therefore, why would the vote of FCT be so be a trump over the more important than, than the vote of states. 36 states? So it's left for the judges to consider first what is constituency, how they to interpret it, and these are precedents. And what some of the argument as a, as a constitutional scholar, we know that constitutions are so generous; they are on their own. They, 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 every constitution is a function of the history of the people and they bargain, they compromise their politicians have made. For example, we should have, elect, like I said before, Lagos was the capital, but he didn't have, he had a governor, he had a house of assembly. FCT is not, it's a territory. Mm -hmm. the US, for example, states have different allocated the delegate count. And so the rest to, to, to 250 does not give all the states equal chance. Mm -hmm. So if you win California, Texas, you might be closer to New York, closer to home. But if you win Maine, uh, uh, maybe uh, 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 Alaska, uh, maybe uh, Arizona, you are still struggling. You are far, you are far, away. You are far away. Very far. So that's right. really <laughs> what it looks So that debate, the judges will decide. If, right. they, if they accept it, mm. then it also pushes us back to, to 1343 three, because it means that the person declared, the president will now be seen as not validly declared. But all these are based on what the tribunal comes to. But it's good well, to keep an beauty, eye yeah. on 1343. Three. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The beauty of all this is that it's going to be adding to our jurisprudence and... Uh, and uh, improving democracy. The improving because next time, yes, we'll factor democracy. all this, all this in the choice we make. Yeah. Yes, thanks so very much. Associate Professor of Law, Sam Amadi, Arise Analyst. <laughs>